uh, invitation uh, to come and talk today in this beautiful location in front of a distinguished audience. Um, so, as the uh, chairman has said, I will talk on the experimental aspect of these uh, magnetic skirmion objects, which are attracting a lot of attention. Um, uh, and in particular, I'll focus on room temperature skirmions and metastable skirmion states in a recently discovered material. So the overview of my talk will be, um, it's quite well, it's just two topics really. I'll introduce uh, magnetic skirmions and then their discovery in this cobalt zinc manganese alloy. And then I'll talk about the metastability of the skirmions in a particular alloy, cobalt 8, zinc 8, manganese 4. <coughs> and these results are summarized in these two papers. And I'll also acknowledge my uh, colleagues on this project, in particular Karabesan and Tokunaga-san, with whom I did all the measurements. And Tokunaga-san deserves the credit for thinking of this system as a high-temperature skirmion host system. So this is my introduction to skirmion. So I won't spend much time on this because I was lucky that Charles has already done this. Um, <coughs> but I will, I will just uh, talk briefly about some of these properties which are important for the rest of the talk. So the sk skirmions that have been reported in the literature generally come in two flavors. And so this is the, 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 this is the nail type skirmion, and this is the chiral block type skirmion. And these are cross sections in a plane perpendicular to applied magnetic field. And you can see these are multi-spin objects which extend over many unit cells. Um, in a lattice, if you think of a localized magnetic picture, a localized picture of magnetic moments. And then in a third dimension, um, along the direction of a magnetic field, these structures are translationally invariant. And this is where we get the picture of vortices. And they're typically, they arrange into hexagonal patterns, uh, hexagonal lattices. So as I mentioned, these, have, these objects have a nanometric size. Um, and uh, therefore, the suitable probes are Lorentz force transmission electron microscopy and small angle neutron scattering and magnetic force microscopy. But there are more and more techniques being applied to studying these objects. So basically, if you know where to look, you can probably work out the signature of where the, what these skirmions, um, how they will appear in your measurements. Um, they've been observed uh, over a wide range of temperatures, I'll explain in this talk. So cryogenic temperatures to beyond 400 Kelvin in bulk materials now. And some of the most important properties are related to this complex spin structure. And it's, it's topologically non-trivial, as can be um, evaluated uh, quantitatively by mapping the magnetic moments from their spin space to the order parameter space, and you'll find that the magnetic moments um, wrap the order parameter space surface an integer number of times. So correspondingly, this carry this ob these skirmion objects each carry a unit of what's called topological charge, and at the same time, um, these fa these skirmion phases are embedded in a phase space which contain topologically trivial. Uh, magnetic structures or disordered phases. And so uh, to move between these topologically non-trivial and trivial phases, you have to go through a discontinuous transition, which indu induces a, an energy barrier in a real system. So these objects are said to have a physical stability related to what's called topological protection. This is the words used in the literature. And another uh, aspect about this um, complex spin structure is that it induces what's called a, a flux quantum of emergent field, which can be measured experimentally in transport and which could be important for um, uh, applications. So I'll talk about bulk skirmion materials, in particular block type materials. Um, so uh, the block type type chiral skirmion. Um, these are all the materials I'm aware of which host skirmion. So in the end, there's not that many, but the list grows uh, slowly over the years. The most famous material is manganese silicon, uh, within which skirmions were first discovered. And uh, this belongs to the, uh, point the chiral tetrahedral point group. Uh, the, the material I'll talk about today is, is exists in another uh, point group, a chiral octahedral point group. But like all of these materials, they're in cubic lattices that are non-centrosymmetric with finite Dalyshinsky more interaction. And this uh, nail type skirmion has been reported in spinels and it sits by itself really. And what's important about this material is that it's got readily tunable composition and an enormous ordering temperature much larger than any of the other materials. And uh, so this is this is a offers a real uh, exciting system to explore broad parameter space, skirmion physics. 
So this is the, uh, these are the equilibrium magnetic field as a function of temperature phase diagrams for skirmial materials. So what's surprising is that many of these materials have the same type of phase diagram, the same structure, even though their internal structures are all uh, very different. Um, so th this phase diagram is characterized by a zero field helical state, which is long period. Um, and then most of the phase diagram under finite field is described by a conical phase. And this is a spin flop phase where the magnetic propagation is along the field then there's this A phase, this skirmion phase, which is stabilized by a small magnetic field and exists only over a few Kelvin of temperature. And so this was first reported in 2009, but in other materials, as I said, with different structures, the phase diagrams are all remarkably similarly structured. Here's copper selenium O3, which is an insulating material. This is a metallic material. So even in this insulating material, the skirmion phase is also just like two Kelvin wide. And then even in this completely different material for the nail type host, the, the phase diagram is differently structured, but the skirmion phase still is only found close to the ordering temperature and under a finite field. So turning to the, the, uh, top, the material, top, which is the topic of the talk, this cobalt zinc manganese system, on the left here I show uh, a graph which shows the ordering temperature as a function of manganese concentration. And this is a, this is a sketch of the lattice and in this lattice, there's 20 sites distributed across two Wyckoff positions. And the ma as we um, uh, this and uh, this manganese, uh, as we dope in the manganese, we find that uh, and keep cobalt and zinc ratio constant. We find the order parameter, the or long range ordering temperature is suppressed, and susceptibility shows eventually you don't get long range order, but a spin glass type transition. And so this system's interesting because um, the crystal lattice symmetry remains the same across this region. And we go from a chiral magnet that orders at 450 Kelvin with no manganese, so cobalt-10, zinc-10, all the way to when there's no cobalt or zinc. So this is beta-manganese, which is a, a famous uh, elemental frustrated spin liquid. And so when you look at this phase diagram, you can see that if you want to have a material which can host a skirmion phase close to room temperature, then you will choose something which orders close to room temperature, because we know the skirmion phase is always just below. And so this is the where we choose the manganese equals 4 concentration with an ordering temperature of 300 Kelvin. And so this is what we did. This is the cobalt-8, zinc-8, manganese-4 uh, equilibrium phase diagram. And in this magnetic field as a function of temperature phase diagram, we find by susceptibility a skirmion phase at room temperature. So cor uh, and most of the, f f the other parts of the phase diagram belong to the other well-known phases, the helical phase, the conical phase. But we also find there's a large coexistence region between these two phases. And this uh, is untypical for, for stoichiometric materials, where there's typically a sharp transition between the helical and conical phases. So this is already indicates um, um, an influence of disorder in the system, which can be understood because manganese will dopes onto the 12D site um, and in an inhomogeneous way. So there's atomic scale disorder in this system. So there's also phase coexistence behind this skirmion phase, which is um, highlighted in this picture. But nevertheless, um, our experiments with both in real space and reciprocal space on this system reveal um, all the expected modulations and diffraction patterns characteristic of the phases. So because of the inherent disorder in these systems, we thought that it would be interesting to study metastability in these systems. And so to introduce the, uh, the topic from a very simple perspective, I just would like to introduce the analogy of carbon allotropes. So many of you will know that carbon its equilibrium uh, structure, or its thermodynamically preferred structure is graphite, but in the Earth's interior, the conditions are such that diamond can form. And if diamond can find a fast route to the Earth's surface, it goes through supercooling or quenching procedure, a metastable diamond can uh, exist at the Earth's surface um, and, and avoid the kinetic transition back to graphite, which would otherwise be achieved if diamond slow cools on its route to the Earth's surface. Another metastable phase is the buckyball, and the, the main the reason why I want to introduce this, uh, this example is because these two metastable states, they exist at the surface of the Earth and are stable because they have a completely different topology to the thermodynamic ground state. And so, to, uh, and so that means that, you, uh, that they can be said to be topologically protected, and to drive the transition, you need to completely destroy all the bonds. And so we're interested with this chiral magnetic analog because we have this topological magnetic structure and so we want to know if we can use its topological protection 
to quench the skirmion phase out of this small pocket and down as a metastable state to lower temperatures and explore the physics of metastable skirmions over a broad parameter space. And so by this way, we would quench this, the equilibrium phase to a metastable state and avoid the transition back to the conical phase. And so the technique which we use is small angle neutron scattering, which is an ideal tool for probing bulk materials non-destructively. One obtains statistical information about, um, about the microscopic magnetism inside a sample. So these experiments were all done at the Paul Scher Institute in Switzerland. Um, just down the hall from the muon source, which Professor Keller talked about on the first day. And this is a typical diffraction pattern um, obtained from the skirmion structure in, in the copper selenium O3 um, material. And from these patterns, we can from the brightness of the spots, we can obtain information about the structure factor. And from their shape in reciprocal space, we can obtain information about the correlation uh, functions. So these are the sands patterns obtained from the equilibrium phase. So in this pattern here, I'll show the, the zero field um, a helical ground state at room temperature. So in this particular case, we see four spots corresponding to two domains of helical order, and each domain gives rise to one magnetic uh, pair of magnetic Bragg peaks. Uh, and that's summarized by this cartoon here. It's what we would expect for two helical domains. <coughs> for the room temperature skirmion phase, when we apply a magnetic field, we actually get 12 spots instead of six. And the reason for this is because the magnetic anisotropy favors alignment of propagation with a cubic axis. And we have two cubic axes in, these plane, in this plane. So correspondingly, there's two, uh, equal, there's two uh, probabili uh, equal probability ways the skirmion phase can nucleate whilst maintaining at least one of its propagation vectors aligned with the anisotropy. So we see 12 spot diffraction patterns in this, in this case. So now when we go through the field quenching procedure, all we simply do is we create an equilibrium skirmion phase and then we quench down to low temperature. And this diagram on the top right is the resulting metastable state uh, magnetic field as a function of temperature phase diagram. And what we find is that um, the, the metastable state that we create now dominates the, the main part of the phase diagram. And this is a metastable skirmion state. So we, take we can take the skirmion state out of this small green area and make it exist all over this phase diagram, in particular at zero field as, uh, as well. And there's also evidence in our measurements, uh, at least in susceptibility in SANS, for a transformation, which I'll talk about. This graph here shows the time dependence of the susceptibility. So there's a normal susceptibility quantity as a function of time. So this is the susceptibility of the skirmion phase here, and this is the conical phase, the equilibrium ground state. And we find that if we feel quench and just stop at 260 and measure the time dependence of the susceptibility, you can see it's basically eternal. And what's interesting is that this, uh, this kind of field quenching is, only is achieved with a, a typical cooling rate of a cryomagnetoid or PPMS. And when you get below 260, you can expect your states to be eternal, your metastable states to be eternal as far as you're concerned. So the remainder of the talk, I'll try to address the origin of the metastability and this, and this proposed transformation in this metastable state. So now I'll, I'll present some SANS data. And so this is uh, SANS data taken during the, the field cooling procedure and subsequent warming procedure. So this SANS data taken here in, in the cooling sequence, I start at room temperature with the equilibrium phase, and then as I cool and the constant field, this pink line, I find the 12 spot pattern of the skirmion phase survives already at 200 Kelvin. And correspondingly, when I, but when I cool further, we observe a transformation in this diffraction pattern, and we see a four spot pattern. Now you may immediately think, okay, this looks like a helical phase. So we've gone through this transition back to a, the equilibrium ground state. But what we find is that when we warm up, we, the transition that we observed on cooling is reversible, and already at 200 Kelvin, we recovered this skirmion phase. So it's still existing as a metastable state. And so this rules out a transition to a helical phase because we would have lost all of the top topological uh, nature of the magnetic order in this phase. And then the only way to get it back is to go up to the equilibrium phase. But we already recovered it at 200 Kelvin. So the main point of this slide is that when we cool and warm, we don't lose the topological charge. These are skirmions. These carry topological charge. And correspondingly, this diffraction pattern could be interpreted in terms of a square-like metastable skirmion state. 
Uh, we can look at these data in a little bit more detail. Um, these are the same data. But on the, on the right here is the intensity as a function of temperature. <coughs> and uh, and, this and the, 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 the field symbols are cooling. And you can see that there's a strange temperature dependence. But uh, if you focus on the blue data on cooling, we lose the intensity in the triangular phase. And when we warm, it comes back, but in a hysteretic manner. But the main point is that the intensity we recover is very similar to that which we got on cooling. So this, this tells us that the, uh, the number of skirmions which, we've, uh, which, which are taking place in this procedure is basically conserved. So the topological charge is basically conserved. And there's also a broad thermohysteresis indicating a first order transition in this metastable state. Uh, and in this graph here, I show the characteristic propagation vector as a function of temperature. And uh, this, is, uh, vari this also varies markedly uh, on, on cooling and transforms uh, through th and varies strongly through the transformation. So in the last few minutes, I will, use, uh, I will discuss the two main discussion points uh, raised by our experiments. <coughs> so the first one is this, um, e this, this novel metastable state, the, the, the existence of extremely robust metastable skirmion states by such a trivial field cooling. And then the second one is the metastable skirmion transformation. So, so we're not the only ones who are interested in metastability. In fact, uh, other researchers have been interested in metastability in clean skirmion systems without disorder. And this, is, this has been studied in manganese silicon, which can be prepared in high-quality crystals. And what these authors did was they put the system in this equilibrium conical phase. And then they could uh, heat up the sample, at, but then and then feel cool extremely rapidly through the skirmion phase. And by cooling at 700 Kelvin per second, the system would remain jammed in the skirmion phase, and then the skirmion phase would exist as a metastable state instead of uh, avoiding the transition. So as you can imagine, this rapid cooling was much more technically involved than what we than what we were doing. Um, but nevertheless, their magnetic field as a function of temperature diagram show this enormous. Uh, Metastable states can be achieved in, in clean crystals. And if you go cold enough, your metastable states are also long-lived. So what this tells us is uh, rather, r maybe rather obviously, but metastability is, uh, is an inherent aspect of these systems because the free energy difference between the various phases is already very small. Uh, correspondingly, by introducing disorder as we did in our system, we can tune this uh, strength of the metastability. So all of this is consistent with the standard picture of metastability. And these data, these study also showed that the balance between the topological stability of the skirmions and the thermodynamic phase stability is entirely therm thermally activated. There was also an additional study which uh, on another chemically disordered system, which is iron cobalt silicon, which is analogous to manganese silicon, but is basically dirty. And these authors also um, explored metastability and field quenching. So in their magnetic field as a function of temperature diagram, they did the same, basically the same as we did. They slow field cooled, and they could get metastable states at low temperature. But what they've, what, what's different um, to us is that when they took the magnetic field off, they lost the skirmions. So they can't have, they didn't have skirmions in zero field. But what they did do is they explored this issue theoretically, and they found that when they start off with a metastable skirmion state and reduce the magnetic field, their skirmions eventually began to merge and form helices in their calculations. And so the, you've seen this picture in Charles's talk. This was uh, the idea they proposed was that this, this transition between a topological magnetic order and a non-topological one is mediated by topological defects, which are mobile and are called monopoles. And so the way this works is the monopoles enter at the surface of a sample, and they basically zip up what they what they called zip up uh, zippers. And so you can see this mo this monopole zips up has zipped up was two skirmion lines into a single skirmion line. So this is two units of topological charge and just one. And then this, this monopole propagates out of the system and removes topological charge from the system. And so we, we tried to do some theoretical calculations, but have so far been unsuccessful. So our only understanding <coughs> is qualitative. It is clear that the atomic scale disorder in our systems strongly promotes the metastability. And it pins the skirmion lines um, and ma magnetic structures prevent the rearrangement of complex magnetic structures. But the disorder is point-like and would be effective pinnings of these point-like objects as well. 
So we propose, we're suspecting that this uh, type of disorder is pinning the monopole and blocking their propagation. At least that's the idea. And then this is the last discussion point I want to talk about, which is the metastable skirmion transformation observed by small angle scattering. And so that already at, at, uh, early after the discovery of magnetic skirmions, theorists set about trying to think how can you get more, you know, skirmion lattices that are not simply hexagonal. And uh, I won't go into the details of these calculations, but I'll just show two, two, tip, uh, two or three typical um, references and examples. So there's Monte Carlo calculations and the landau lifshitz gilbert um, uh, simulation, <coughs> which show that basically when you increase the in-plane anisotropy perpendicular to the field, you can, you can drive a transformation from a square, uh, triangular phase to a square-like phase. And this is a quite a common feature of these simulations. And so this br brings an analogy back to vortex, a uh, superconducting vortex physics, because of, uh, anisotropy in the superconducting state can drive such transitions in, vortex in the superconducting vortex lattices. And it seems that in this case, the, uh, the in-plane anisotropy becomes uh, anisotropic and can drive such a transition in skirmions. So, that's just, uh, so we, we may expect in more anisotropic magnets, um, you can have such uh, uh, non-hexagonal skirmion lattices. But the, la the, the, the last thing I'll talk about is trying to understand what's happening in terms of the topological charge. What's really happening during our quenching procedure? That's our question. So if we start at room temperature, we have this 12-spot pattern, and from its reciprocal space wave vector, we can determine its lattice spacing is 130 nanometers, and we have a skirmion density of 75 per micron squared. And then in the square phase, or proposed square phase, the lattice constant is smaller. But th so correspondingly, the density is uh, it's almost two times larger. And this is actually quite surprising because you can only put topological charge into the system in this phase. And the, and the density should be highest for a hexagonal closed pack phase. So the, the, fact, the fact that the skirmion density seems to be two times higher is uh, surprising. And the question is, if the skirmion number is actually constant, as I've argued, how can its density vary? And so the picture we proposed for this is, the triangular, is that the triangular skirmion lattice during the quenching procedure either undergoes one of two possible procedures. So in this triangular phase in this cartoon starts off with 10 skirmions. And then during the quenching procedure, it either undergoes a phase separation to a state with 10 skirmions square coordinated and then in different regions, helical type structures. Or alternatively, the system undergoes a nematic-like transition um, where the skirmions become elongated along uh, one, one zero zero directions because of the anisotropy. So these skirmions become distorted in shape, but they still carry the topological charge. And this is also 10 skirmions if you add it up. So either of these pictures can give this diffraction pattern, and either of these scenarios could be connected with the, the background equilibrium phase of the metastable state, which is the helical phase. So these stripe-like modulations appear. Okay, so that's the summary of what I've talked about. So the main result of the study is this metastable state diagram, which I've argued exists in this material due to a combination of topological protection and disorder. And we had this discontinuous metastable skirmion coordination transition with two possible scenarios, which remains to be addressed. And then, this is my last talk uh, slide, which is uh, the perspective. So we just studied one material, but clearly we can quench from higher temperatures down to room temperature, so have room temperature metastable skirmions. There's various things to do, systematic studies of the factors behind metastability, magnetic frustration, skirmion states of matter and dynamics, reduced dimensionality. Applications is more of a question, but I think these skirmions are too big um, to be useful, but nevertheless, it's, uh, it's enough fun for us, and uh, thank you for your attention. That's the end. Okay.